We're here at the Clean Tech and Technology Metal Summit at the King Edward Hotel in Toronto. Today's guest is George Bach. Thank you for coming. No problems at all. How was the flight in? Oh, it's from, uh, from Shanghai to Hong Kong to here, uh, 15 hours, all good. Well, you must have a great project to talk about to make that flight worthwhile. Absolutely. It's been seven years in the making. Seven years. Is that when you was first staked, found? Uh, discovered in 2010. Um, and from there, exploration, success, project development, and the uh, trucks are rolling in right now. When did you join the company? 2010. So it's all been with you? Absolutely. Fully permitted? Yes. So let's talk about the project then. What kind of metals are we looking for? Okay, so we've got a, a Zenitime mineralization which hosts heavy rare earths. So we've got a very dominant um, dysprosium, uh, about 9% and terbium is the second biggest. So they're the dominant um, um, minerals in our uh, deposit. And if you're into mining, you must have your metallurgy figured out. Yes, yeah, so we've been doing metallurgy since late 2010. We actually started metallurgy before we drilled our first hole to make sure that it could be processed. So you had a big event happen in the middle of April. Yeah, absolutely. The board got together on the 18th of April, just after Easter, and uh, we approved the project to go forward and uh, commence mining. And how will you fund that? Uh, so it's been funded in a very interesting way because obviously with industrial minerals, it's a much more complex um, project to uh, finance as opposed to gold and iron ore. So right. through, through equity, uh, through uh, prepayments from our offtake partner, uh, and also a deferred payment from our uh, EPC contractor, as well as some, um, um, some debt factoring on our research and development that we get from the Australian government. Uh, to date, the only rare earth producer outside of China is Linus, and you're hoping to become the second. What's your timeline to be in production? Okay, so mining starts uh, the first week of June, so we've just um, been doing top, topsoil removal uh, at the two pits um, and doing our other preparation work. Fabrication has started of the project, of uh, the plant in China, and we hope to start seeing that arrive on the shores of Australia in about October, November. Um, we then put it together and uh, we expect to commission it in the second quarter of next year. In July, uh, we start producing, July 2018. Now, earlier in our conversation, you had shown me these pictures that are up on the screen now from your corporate presentation. These are from site? Yeah, absolutely. So the two main pictures that you'll see there is um, from our two open cuts, so the two ore bodies that we'll be mining uh, as part of this pilot plan. And is all open pit, any underground? Yeah, so for the pilot plant, which is a three year uh, project, they're gonna be from open cuts down to between 30 and 50 meters. Um, but in the bigger project, uh, stage three of our business plan, we plan to go underground. What are the big metrics we should look for this year? Look, um, the, the key thing for us now is about sticking to um, uh, what we say we're gonna do. So it's, it's uh, completion of the mining, uh, it's delivery of the plant to site, it's the installation. Uh, so they're the real key factors in 2017. So looking through your background, you have a, more of a business background than a mining background, although you've had a foot in both worlds. Do you think that we need more business people in the rare earths market or more mining people? Look, it's an interesting one because um, I think when you look at any organization, it's about shareholder return and the leader of an organization needs to have um, all the business skills, if you like. And with, when you look at specifics, be it geology, metallurgy, engineering, you get specialists in those areas to work with you to um, drive a company forward. But you know, my, my job is all about leadership and strategy. And your company shares trade on the ASX? That's right, we're, uh, we trade on the ASX. NTU is our code. Um, and then market capitalization at the moment of about $87 million. With cash in the bank? Yeah, we do. We have, uh, we have about $15 million uh, in April and uh, we'll be seeing more funds come through and naturally we'll be paying a hell of a lot of bills this year. So uh, <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun. Sorry, um, earlier we talked about your offtake partner. Is all of your production called for under that offtake agreement or is there some for the free market? Yeah, so what we've done is um, as part of the development of this project, we've, we're establishing what's called a pilot plant. So we completed our definitive feasibility study in February 2015 and the cost of that was $329 million. Now, that's a lot of money to go and get, get out in this current market. So we decided to scale down. So 10% of the full scale operation is what we've defined as our pilot plant. And, and we're gonna run it for three years. So 100% of the production for that three years has been, um, is, is signed, sealed and delivered under this offtake agreement, but nothing for the full scale operation. So then after three years, it's free market? Absolutely, so this gives everyone out, outside there uh, an opportunity to have a look at the project. We'll, we'll hopefully share some product 
um, from the pilot plant uh, outside of the uh, the off taker, and people can really uh, have a look at it and get ready for uh, the big project. Looking forward to the updates, George. Thank you for your time. No worries. Thank you.